Welcome back, folks. Today I'm going to show you guys how to build a pole properly. And right off the bat, we're going to start off by going into your settings. If you haven't watched the beginner's guide, I'll leave it down in the description. But make sure you have this set to pro and not simple. And that's so you can see what part of the pole is getting the most strain. And we are going to go over here to the shop. And as you can see, our slots are empty. We're going to go build a pole here, guys. We are going to build probably around a 10 pound pole here. So let's go. Okay, so we got a few options here. Um, the 8-2 will cast farther. So the longer the pole, generally, the longer it will cast. So we're going to use an 8-2. And before I leave this menu here, um, on the right hand of your screen, if you see the four boxes, the top row of squares is whether it requires a spin reel or a casting reel and the bottom row, to, row is wh whether it is a bait pole or a lure pole so what we're going to be going to do is we know that this is a lure pole and it requires a spinning uh, reel so we're going to go over to here to reels go down to spinning and we're going to click on that and we are going to go over to uh, let's see, let's get over to the 10 pound range. And uh, this one actually looks like a pretty good one here. Let's just make sure there isn't, this one's not too bad either. Um, you can go over a little bit and then run your rear drag down and I'll explain that here. But anyway, we are going to buy this one. And if you guys don't know what a lot of these numbers mean, the max drag is when you put the power completely up on the reel, how much it can it can pull. Um, I generally make sure the recovery is good. That's uh, 31 isn't too bad, and you'll see some other poles are a lot lower. And what recovery is, guys, if you don't know, is how quick that the pole will reel in as fast as it can. So you want that to be quick so you're not wasting time between casts. So we're going to go ahead and grab this reel, and we are going to set this up here real quick. And so we need some line now, and we are going to go ahead and get 10-pound line. Okay, let's see if we got some braid that's 10-pound. Um, the reason I like braid on spinning poles is it has a tendency to actually... Um, cast farther and there's actually perfect there's 10 pound brain now sometimes you're not going to get this lucky like we're getting right now and you just have to get as close as you can and where is that 10 pound braid in here did it go into my home storage actually it might have let's take a quick look there it is yep and we're just going to put all of it that we can on there and i'm actually going to sell Oop, I gotta get, uh, bring some of this back in so we can actually equip it. So, I generally, on these little poles, especially if I'm a little lower level, will put max amount of line on it because there's nothing that that is gonna do to actually hurt you. And so now you can see we have a setup. Now, if you need a leader, and this slot here is for whether you um, are fishing basically for any fish that have teeth. So a good example of ones that you always want on is pike and gar, for example. In this game, they will always be able to bite your line. Um, and, and so you, if that's the case and you need that, just go down to your titanium leaders and find the appropriate one. And for this one, we would actually use 11 um, because there is, let's see, 7. Yeah, you want to have 11. Your leader needs to be a little bit more stronger than your uh, actual full setup. And as you can see here, we're basically on a 10-pound setup. Um, you can actually get these to be all the way 10 or all the way matching, and it still works. And I'll show you that, guys, in a second. Um, example, this setup that I have here uh, is all 13. And you can run this reel on max drag, and it does not hurt it. But 
Sometimes it doesn't always work out because if you run this one on max drag, you see 23 pounds here and 23 pounds here. Believe it or not, for some reason, this will actually break that line. But at any rate, let's go to the lake uh, and test this pull out. And because I know my reel is just slightly weaker than my line and my pull, I know that I can go full power on my reel, and I will show you what I mean by that. On the outside in the bottom corner, you can see the circles go, uh, the parts of the circle go up and down, and that is how much of the power of the reel you're using. And we're just going to go to full power, and I'm going to go hook up a larger bass, guys, quick, and then show you. But okay, as you can see, Right here, we have a pole that can get all the way to the top without breaking. We see it. We have no red outline. Sometimes the bars will get highlighted in red if they are going to break. But we also know that our reel is 0.1 smaller than everything else. So we know we're good to go on that front. And we're getting the most out of this pole that we possibly can. If you have a setup that's down into the yellow or green or any part of it is, you might want to consider getting a new setup because that is just way too low. I normally have them keep mine within the top three bars actually um, into the red there. Almost all my setups and I want them to be balanced so I'm getting the most XP that I can be out of that pole and getting the most use out of it as well. And it looks like we have a very large guy on. The one thing I want to say to you guys is... Um, worth mentioning too is when you're doing this the first time you turn your drag up or you know get your drag where you want it um you don't uh you don't want to have something on that you want to lose like i know the setup is good because of the drag is little less than the other one so i don't i, I know i'm good and i've done this a lot before but when you're first doing it guys you probably are gonna want to actually <clears throat> have something cheap on there like a little worm from the shop or something just to test out something you're not worried about losing here guys well, it looks like we got quite the guy on actually here this might be a unique um there we go he's getting in a little closer here but you can see uh, we're getting the most we can out of here that's definitely got to be a unique smallmouth i would think there we go, and we're getting a couple green arrows. And if you're worried about leveling, I do have a leveling guide that I'm going to put down in the description as well about how to level, guys. Uh, but hopefully this helps you out, and we'll see you next time.